Sergei Pavlovich versus Curtis Blades took place in the main event of UFC Fight Night Vegas 71. Pavlovich versus Blades and Sergei Pavlovich, the Russian and Garnu, gets it done by first round TKO towards the end of the first round, as I said it would happen, and dispatches of Curtis Blades with relative ease. Although Curtis Blades was doing okay, it wasn't good enough for the Russian Nganu, who puts him away at the end of the first round. Very good win by Sergei Pavlovich. But before I even talk about this fight and how it happened and what happened in the fight, I do want to say before anything else, I don't care about Jones versus Miocic anymore. I'm just going to say it. I was okay with it. I didn't mind it as long as it was happening in July. I don't want to see this guy wait until 2024 to fight for the belt. He's got momentum. He's on a crazy KO streak. He's tying almost like the record in the UFC. Four KOs in a row. Um, he's got six right now. I think Chuck Liddell has seven. He's up there with Don Fry, I believe. Um, very, very good streak that he's on right now. He's got momentum. I don't care about Jones versus Miocic anymore. What has Miocic done compared to Sergei Pavlovich? That's Derek Lewis, Taito Ivasa, and Curtis Blades back to back to back in all under, I believe, a round of fight time. That's crazy. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. I just said that out loud. He beat Tui Vasa in 54 seconds, Derek Lewis in 55 seconds, and then he beat Curtis Blades in 3 minutes and 8 seconds. That's under a round of fight time, I believe. This guy is different. He is absolutely different. You know what I mean? He landed that rear uppercut to finish the job and then landed a tight right hook on the face of Blades afterwards after he covered up and finished him on the ground with some shoveling punches on the face of Blades. It sucks for Blades because, again, he was looking okay in this fight on the feet, but there's a thing that happens with Curtis Blades, and I've been saying this for the longest time. He does well on the feet in a couple of fights, and then he becomes a striker. He does well in the grappling in a fight, and then he becomes an absolute overshooter of takedowns. You know what I'm saying? It's weird how Blades works. It's like he takes confidence, not from who he originally is as a fighter, but what he's done in his recent fight. You know what I mean? Like his last few fights, he looked good on the feet. So he struck with Sergei Pavlovich for a whole round. He shot one takedown. He got dropped. He got wobbled with a jab and he never shot a takedown after that. He shot one takedown. It got stuffed with ease. Fair play to Sergei Pavlovich. He shook off the takedown. But like, I thought he was going to be shooting a lot more on Sergei Pavlovich and trying to close the distance and back Pavlovich up. But Pavlovich hits different, man. He was taking some big shots off of Curtis Blades as well, but he just ate them, dished out some punches back, and finished Blades in the first round, again, with that rear uppercut that he hit Shamil Abdurakimov with. I actually mentioned that in my breakdown of this fight, because that's what he goes for against wrestlers. You know what I'm saying? He went for that overhand right around the guard on Tui Vasa and Derek Lewis, because he knows they're going to be swinging or covering up, and he goes for that uppercut on these uh, wrestlers. Um, did I say wrestlers for Tuivasa Lewis? I meant strikers. But uh, And he goes for that rear uppercut against these wrestlers. right And that 84-inch reach. You shouldn't really be landing uppercuts. Or like whatever you want to call it. Like a straight uppercut it looked like. It didn't even get looped too much. It just comes straight up from the hip and shovels up to the face. His reach allows him to land shots from ranges that other fighters aren't able to do. 84 inches of reach. He's landing uppercuts at range whilst going forwards. Crazy KO. Amazing win from Sergei Pavlovich. 30 years of age as a heavyweight. Soon to be 31. He's, in his, he's not even in his prime yet, man. He's not even in his prime yet. Absolutely ridiculous, dude. He's going to be a monster. And he, and he looked a little bit heavier for this fight. You know what I mean? He had a bit of chub on him. For this one, I guess that was because he wanted to be a little bit heavier, just in case uh, Curtis Blades tried to shoot some takedowns. He wanted to have the muscle and just the weight in general to make it hard to manipulate him. Um, but he dispatched of Blades with relative ease. And again, Blades was doing good in the fight. Like, Blades was landing good shots. He got finished, of course, eventually, but he was landing check hooks as Pavlovich was coming in. Pavlovich was trying to go for his one-two, and every time he threw the one, 
uh, Blades moved and threw a check hook and landed it on like three different occasions. But Pavlovich just ate it. The same way he ate that right hook from Taito Ivasa after he was walking him down. He will eat one to give one, knowing that he can eat one better and he can give one better. You know what I'm saying? Not in a Jeff Molina type of way, but you know what I'm saying? He can take shots better than you. He can give shots better than you. And as simple as that. Walked down Curtis Blades for the majority of the fight. Stayed patient. I was worried at one point he might gas out because... There was like a moment in the fight where it was like, oh, hang on a second. He's throwing a lot here and he's not landing as much as he would like to be landing. I know that. You know what I mean? A lot of the shots were hitting Blades on the guard. Blades was moving quite well. He landed a couple of good leg kicks on Sergei Pavlovich. Um, but one takedown from Curtis Blades. It sucks to see. I wish I would have seen Blades shoot a bunch of takedowns before he got rocked. You know what I mean? Like while you're with it in the head to 100%, shoot a takedown. Let me see what a non-concussed Blades looks like shooting a takedown on Pavlovich. And then I'll decide if he's answered that wrestling question. Um, but Blades waited until he was rocked. He got dropped with a right hand behind the ear early in the round. Um, I think around uh, the two-minute mark in the round, actually, I think. And then after that, got wobbled with a jab. And it was just like, okay, it's a downhill struggle for Curtis Blades now. Pavlovich is going to get him eventually, it feels like. I was worried because, again, he was walking into some shots. But he's just, the energy he puts out there, he's not worried about the shots he's taken. And you're doing it from like weird angles that you don't want to be throwing from. Like Blades is on his back foot, on one leg, like off balance a little bit, trying to swing a check hook. Like he's not putting his weight behind his punches. Whereas Pavlovich leads the dance every time. And he's got his opponents wincing out there like, oh God, what is he going to throw at me next? I can. I bet you they feel the power immediately. They must do. They must do. They probably feel the power of Pavlovich off of like the first punch that he lands on them. Like, oh my God. I better not get hit by that again. And it turns him into like, like Tui Vasa and Derek Lewis are known for the scraps. You know what I mean? They're known for getting scrappy. And immediately in the Lewis fight after Lewis got caught, Oh, God, back up. No, please don't hit me again. Wasn't swinging back. Was just trying to move out the way of shots. It takes away their heart. It takes away their grit in a firefight when Pavlovich lands on them. And when he fought Tui Vasa, people talk about, oh, he dropped him with a jab. Dude, the first right hand he landed on Tui Vasa around the guard, I knew something was up. Tui Vasa would have been normally scrapping back immediately. But he was covering up like, oh, God, uh, let me get moving. I need to move away from this guy for a second and just sort of like get out of dodge for a bit because this guy hits differently. He got his performance bonus. And I'm telling you, dude, nothing will create hunger. Nothing will create hunger in a fight than... Um, nothing will make a hungrier fighter than gambling all of it on the slots before you fight. He was seen on the slot machine gambling before the fight and he just set his bank account to zero. Set his bank account to absolutely zero. You know what I'm saying? And then once he's in there, he's like, I've got a win or I'm not getting home at this point. You know what I mean? I need this win or I can't afflo- afford the flight back to Russia. We got problems. And now it's like, what's next for Sergei Pavlovich? Obviously, he'll likely be the backup for Jones versus uh, Miocic. Why not? At this point, otherwise he's going to be out for ages. So I'm sure he wants to do that because that would guarantee his title shot next. And sign me up because that builds the narrative of him even more. That KO uh, against Blades is big, but him showing up and Jones answering questions about him. And, you know, I'm actually going to retire after this. It'll create a narrative that Jones don't want the Pavlovich smoke. You know what I'm saying? That's what the UFC does. I'm not saying that's what should be done. It's what the UFC does. I bet you anything, if Pavlovich is the backup fighter and it's known that he's the backup fighter, Jones better like act like he's interested in fighting him because the UFC is going to spin that so quickly. You know what I mean? Like if they say Pavlovich has rightfully earned his title shot at heavyweight and he's the backup for this fight, ready to step in if anything happens, Jones, uh, what do you feel about fighting him next? And Jones says, um, I'm actually going to retire after I beat Stipe. I'm not interested in fighting Pavlovich. That's going to be a promo for Pavlovich's title fight for the vacant belt. I bet you. The UFC will twist it and use it. And that's like Jones didn't want that fight. I want to see him versus Jones. I don't care about Stipe, dude. 
Stipe, fight Aspinall, fight night main event in London. That'd be amazing. And then the winner of that can get a title shot. I'm interested in Pavlovich Jones. Because Stipe is just getting old. I do get the idea of, you know, the greatest light heavyweight of all time versus the greatest heavyweight of all time. But, man, I want to see Pavlovich get his shot. I really do want to see Pavlovich get his shot. I'm trying to find his Instagram page to see how many followers he has. Um, I'm just going to check it real quick. He has... How many followers? 177,000? Russia, come on. Get behind your dude here. What's going on over there? I don't know what's next for him. It has to be Aspinall, right? I think Aspinall... My God, everything keeps playing audio. I think Aspinall needs to fight against like a Tybura or even a Tuivasa. I think a Tuivasa-Aspinall fight would be good. And then if Aspinall wins that in the main event of UFC London, which I'm assuming they're going to go with because Pimlet's still injured... They can do him versus Sergei Pavlovich for the vacant belt eventually. Because the thing is, Volkov's a training partner of Pavlovich. So he's not really going to be sort of like wishing to fight Volkov anytime soon. And I doubt the UFC really want Volkov to get a title shot either. Even though I think that would be an interesting matchup just because of the height of Volkov. Um, I don't know. It's tough to say, you know. But man, he's 30 years of age. He's still getting better. And he's going to be number two ranked. He should be above... Garn and Miocic. Am I wrong in saying that? Garn beat Rosenstroik, Volkov. Good wins, good wins. Volkov, Rosenstroik. There was another that he beat. Derek Lewis. And then he beat Tuivasa on the on the bounce back, right? But Pavlovich has taken on... I think Lewis was number four. He beat him. Then Blades was number th four. He's beaten him. And then I believe... Uh, Tuivasa was like number two or something, number three. So that's three top five wins back to back to back for Pavlovich. He deserves to be above Miocic and Garn based on recency, right? The Blades win on Blades' current form is a better win than anything Garn's done recently. You know what I mean? He's been he's lost two out of his last three if you look at it on paper. Stipe's lost to Nganu and hasn't fought since. So like there must be some kind of deterioration there. I think they need to move Pavlovich up to number one, keep Stipe at number two, and move Garn down to number three. My opinion. So, yeah, looking forward to what's next for him. He's a monster, and I think he's going to be problems in the future of the heavyweight division. Um, I don't know who beats him. Maybe a jail to Almeida with a slick takedown attempt. I don't know, but we'll have to see what he does to Rosenstroik. Uh, maybe a Tom Aspinall with a slick takedown. You've got to catch him. Not with a blatant shot. You've got to catch him with like a by surprise type of shot in the middle of the firefight. So one, you've got to have head movement. Aspinall has that at heavyweight. Not many heavyweights move their head like Aspinall. So maybe Aspinall's the best chance of beating him just because he can impose some like speed on the feet and then maybe slip a few and duck under and get him. But I don't see many other people beating him, man. He grapples with Spivak. He, he strikes with Volkov in his training camp. He's going to be problems. Big problems for the rest of that division. Yeah, great win by Sergei Pavlovich. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip, I'll see you later. Goodbye.